All right, so here we go with round one. And when you have what looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler, it doesn't always play out that way. But given what these fighters said to us on Thursday, the game plans seem pretty clear. They're very clear game plans. But which one of them is able to implement the game plan most effectively? The grappler will try to get forward, get close, try to secure takedowns. He's even willing to pull guard to make sure that he is in the grappling situation. The striker needs to stay at space. The striker needs to maintain distance and fight behind that beautiful jab he possesses. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. Goes upstairs for an elbow. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high level grappler. You don't see that very often. All right, side control now, DC. You know he's in his element on the ground. A lot of tricks up his sleeve. A lot of tricks. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground. That's very important. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. All right, working on the ground here, his opponent's feet on the hips. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by Blades. Back to the stand-up now. Both fighters upright. 26 total strikes have landed for Curtis Blades. Big ball punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Level change. The leg. Finish the takedown. Great job. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head, like, through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape, or maybe look for a Kimura here. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Under a minute to go. Another big takedown. Blades gets the single leg takedown. Nicely done there. Oh, he's that guillotine. He's that guillotine. He might get a finish here. Oh, how about this? As he jumps to side mount to try to counter the guillotine with a Von flu choke. Logan St. Cru would be proud. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in a submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. All right, we have arrived at the start of round two. Francis Ngannou. And that man, Curtis Razor Blades. And they separate. A little single collar tie there. And Ganu gets caught with that punch. His chin is held on. He gets the takedown here. Now we'll see what he can do with it. Let's see if he can secure top position after working so hard for that takedown. Close guard here. He's very comfortable here working off of his back, DC. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots to the top. All right, so a high amplitude double leg takedown there. Now we'll see what he can do with it to try to advance position on the ground. You knew that he was going to attack the double because he's such an explosive guy. He got it on the hips, finished the shot very quickly. Fantastic job. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Effective punch there by Curtis Blades. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, if you're going to sit there at the drive through order a combination, take the soda with your food. Take him down, cut him. Take him down, cut him. Over and over, he's securing these takedowns. We have now crossed the midpoint of this fight. 
nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. Close guard. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, working inside the closed guard now. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Oh, man, this ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as he gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. One minute. Nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. Uh, looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Ngata. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. One more round. You got one more round for me? This is the last. Are you ready? You ready? Here we go, now five minutes remain in the fight. Oh, massive head kick there, we'll see if he can finish. some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. All right, close guard now. You gotta be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. <laughs> Nicely done there as he forces the miss from his opponent. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement. He's gonna start looking to try to attack a rear naked choke, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking, because he's getting choked. Somehow stays in the fight. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control, because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Well, anytime you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Just over two minutes to go in our third and final round. Side control now. Blades is attempting to pass here, but he's denied by the defense. All right, half guard now. Not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up to your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt named Daniel Cormier. Blades' <laughs> lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swelling. 